everyone. This is a lesson on domain and range, another review to topic for Pure Math 030. So you would have worked with this frequently before. And I'm going to review the basics, but I'm also going to tell you and work with a few specific applications that you will see in this course. So the domain is the set of all first coordinates in a set of ordered pairs, and that would mean it's usually the x. So most people associate domain with x. The range is the set of all second coordinates in a set of ordered pairs, usually y. So most people, of course, associate it with y. However, you would probably already have seen applications where this isn't the case. Anything on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, makes up the domain. Anything on the vertical axis would make up the range. So science applications would not necessarily refer to them in terms of x and y. We mostly will, but when we start getting into applications, that will change here as well. So identifying the domain and range graphically. This is the priority for Math 30 or 030 Pure. So I'll go through a few examples, just inspection of the graphs and see where it takes us. So determine the domain and range of the following. So we have a graph. This is actually a um, Par parabola, so it's the inverse of a quadratic function that we looked at earlier. This one's opening to the right. And mostly when you're dealing with domain and range, you can get the answer by inspection. So I'm going to write this out by inspection. domain well it does not go forever left and right you can see that the lowest x value is x is equal to 0 and then it goes all the way forever to the right so we would indicate this using a set notation is all x such that x is an element of the set of real numbers or the a member of the set of real numbers. So that, oops, where, excuse me, x is greater than or equal to 0. Now this can be written in any order. Now most people would eventually write this as simply this, x greater than or equal to 0, x e r. You do not need to put that all x such that which is the first part there. That's just defining the variable. So this is optional. But it would be all the x values greater than or equal to 0. Now the range, on the other hand, this graph, even though it doesn't go there directly, it does cover every possible y value, forever upwards and forever downwards. So we would then say all y such that y is an element of the set of real numbers. And again, most people in 30 pure would just say y e r. All real numbers means everything. So it meanders upwards. And that's really what it means from a non-graphical perspective, you're simply stating that it can be any possible y value. There is no restriction on the y whatsoever. Let's take a look at another one. This is a little different. It's a rough looking graph, but it's a linear graph that goes forever left and right. So when we do the domain, and once again by inspection, we note that it can be anything, except it's not the set of real numbers, because the set of real numbers, as you will recall, implies fractions, decimals, everything. So you'd have a continuous connected curve or line. 
and in, in this one, it's only going to be a member of the set of integers. So all the integers left and right. And this one does go forever, so there's not a pos there's not an integer that it cannot be. And the same thing is true ho uh, vertically for the range. where y can be anything. So all you need to indicate y is, is an element of the set of integers. You won't see that too much. Most of the stuff you're going to get is the set of real numbers, which means that it's a connected continuous curve. Number three, here we have an ellipse. And we cover these in detail in the conic sections unit, but for domain and range it's um, a good example. So the domain of this one, the lower limit is negative 4. The upper limit is positive 4. So we write this as lower limit negative 4, have the arrow pointing left, left, excuse me, then the x, and then the upper limit. And Technically, we would, if you want to do it by the letter of the law, we would say all the real numbers because it's a connected curve. So this is your lower limit. This is your upper limit. So all the numbers between negative 4 and positive 4, inclusive. And sometimes people will use absolute value notation. You'll see this in your workbook, where x, the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4. And this implies the same thing, that all the numbers between 4 and negative 4, keeping in mind that absolute value simply takes the positive value. So when you use this type of notation, and it's optional, you don't have to when you're setting it up yourself, you're simply doing the positive half of it, and by putting the absolute value sign around it, you are also accounting for the negative ones. And I think I can sneak the range in here, it's a little, little tight, but the range would work the same way, noting that the lower limit is negative 3, and the upper limit is positive 3. So negative 3 is less than or equal to y, which is less than positive 3, y, e, r. So you will see that a lot for these figures that have endpoints. And this, too, could be expressed as absolute value of y is less than or equal to 3. Type of thing you can do. Here we have a reciprocal function. This is y is equal to 1 over x, which we looked at earlier. And with the L, with the um, inspection of the equation, you can see that x cannot be 0. And we would use that for domain as well. If x cannot be 0, you could say that x is everything except 0. So x cannot be 0, but otherwise all real numbers. Now the other choice would be to state something like um, x is greater than 0 or x is less than 0, but it's much easier to say what it is not as opposed to what it is. And then the range would be similar. State only what y cannot be. y cannot be 0, y is otherwise an element of all real numbers. When you take a calculus course, you work these out algebraically. However, we're not gonna I'm not going to bother with that um, in this course. It's usually graphical or recognizing 
the nature of that particular graph. I'm going to stop right there. There will be another lesson following this, which would do some calculator operations regarding this. Look for the homework to be listed on the WebCT course itself as opposed to on this lesson. Thank you for your time.